So I think we should just get started. On behalf of Access to Integrative Medicine, AIM Health Institute, and the GW Office of Integrative Medicine and Health here at, uh, in Washington, DC, welcome to Mindfulness Experience. AIM is a nonprofit organization with the mission to provide vulnerable and low-income communities with access to whole person health and wellness. GW provides professional development, education, and community outreach to improve health and wellness. Today's facilitators are Dr. Netta um, Dasmalchi. She's an internal medicine resident physician here at GW, and she's a contributor to the ABC News Medical Unit. So some of you may have seen her on TV or read one of her articles. Uh, she is going to be joined by Reiki master teacher, Luann Jacobs, who is also a biofeedback instructor and a member of the AIM advisory board and one of our best supporters. So I'll turn everything over to Dr. Netta. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Um, let me just share the screen here because I'm learning this as we go. Okay. So just to give a brief, um, and thank you so much for the inter introduction, Jeanette. It was very sweet of you. Uh, just to give a little bit more information. Um, yes, I am a third year medical internal medicine resident at GW. Um, I've always had this interest in integrative medicine, so I'm very much honored to be here today. Um, so I had the opportunity to write for ABC News as a rotation um, in April, and I was supposed to be in New York City, you know, put, meet Dr. Ashton, learn the ins and outs of the network, and instead the pandemic, of course, happened, and I was working from home for ABC um, night and day, writing for them, editing scripts, and making sure that the medical news that was being portrayed in the media was pertinent and accurate. Um, from my one month rotation, I was asked to stay on, um, of course, as a resident, you know, time's always a limiting factor. So I've stayed on writing articles for them as residency permits. And, um, I feel honored to be able to work with such incredible, incredible editors who are supportive of my interests in cardiovascular disease and nutrition. Um, but so I get to pitch articles to them, um, and always have scientific backing so that I'm giving them accurate, giving the public accurate information. And one of the topics I'm going to focus on today is set based off an article that I wrote um, in regards to the pandemic. And it's not just about COVID infection, but it's about the secondary effects of the pandemic that I think we haven't really talked much about, which is weight gain. Uh, I've had patients in my own outpatient practice who have had to go up on hypertensive medications, changing insulin doses because of following up with them after three months of not seeing them in clinic. And looking at their scale numbers, their weight has increased. And they admit, yes, I've been eating, you know, home cooked foods or bread or eating in regards to keeping myself comfort. And as a result, we've had to go up on some other medications regarding the worsening cardiometabolic syndromes that they're um, having. In addition, uh, the weight gain can also affect your immune system. So that's something that I'm going to focus on as well today. So um, I've had many patients mention they've gained the COVID-19 and the quarantine 15, and I'm just going to discuss how this weight gain has affected um, all, our health. So why has this happened? Uh, Stay-at-home orders are mandated in March 2020 as a result of the pandemic, and that's a salient effort to allow epidemiologists to understand um, and continue outbreak investigation. Uh, so patients were, so, sorry, I shouldn't say patients, but people were staying home. Uh, there's also this vaca vacation mentality that was starting to happen. There's a lot of research behind this too, that when we have a vacation mentality holiday, we start to graze more, gravitate towards more carbohydrate dense foods, nutrient um, poor, uh, drink more alcohol. So those are kinds of things that kind of occur when we're staying at home or thinking that we're on a vacation. Um, in addition, there was a lot of unknowns that were occurring, and I know that many people are still dealing with the stress and anxiety in regards to how they were going to get food on their table, um, getting the infection, what did this pandemic mean, not being able to be with family, being in isolation. So seeking comfort and stress through food uh, because of the dopamine surge that we get with foods that are high in um, refined carbohydrates, high in added sugars, um, and again, nutrient poor. Uh, as a result, um, the public responded to these um, emotional and un unknowns by many of the headlines that we see here. So drinking uh, alcohol, uh, 
sales went up very, very high. JAMA actually wrote an article discussing the changes in adult alcohol consumption. And another article found that women were had an increase in alcohol consumption by over 41%, which is pretty impressive. We see that shelf stable foods were sold out. I remember Whole Foods had to put signs um, asking for us to not take more than two boxes of frozen pizza and um, take four units of pasta. So I thought that was very interesting at the time. Uh, in addition, there was a yeast shortage. Everyone started baking bread and there was no way to find baker's yeast and many grocery stores. So those are kind of evidence of what people were really consuming during the during these stay at home orders. Um, in addition, actually, Google searches had changed, and that's something I wanted to mention. So typically in March, Google would find people searching for healthy foods, healthy diet, because of after the holidays, people are taking initiative to change their lifestyle as a New Year's resolution. This time, though, in March 2020 and April 2020, uh, one of the research articles that I had no found saw that there was actually an increase in baked goods um, and making bread. So something that was very much changed in prior years. As a result, I'm just showing the spectrum here that, you know, people started gaining weight and mainly uh, visceral um, adipose tissue. Um, and that's the most dangerous kind because visceral adiposity is linked to cardiometabolic syndromes, like I discussed before, like hypertension, diabetes, um, just metabolic syndrome in general. Uh, and also it's linked to cancers, um, especially breast cancer. There's been research that shows there's a higher risk of breast cancer with um, abdominal um, um, adipose tissue. So in addition to that, we have people consuming processed meats, refined grains, prepackaged foods are full of preservatives. Those are all linked to chronic inflammation um, that actually leads to suppressing the immune system and the immune function that we need to fight a virus like COVID. So it kind of helps us understand why people with diabetes or hypertension um, and all these cardiometabolic issues were having poor outcomes. Um, also poor Food intake, poor eating, really, um, leads to increased anxiety. Again, you're searching for that dopamine surge and it becomes a vicious cycle. And poor sleep, um, your sleep changes as well. So which part of our diet so causes the poor immune function? So it's really multiple things, not just one thing that we can consume or one thing that we can pinpoint and say that's what's making us um, not have a strong immune system during we as we enter the fall and winter months. So lack of adequate protein, added sugars, uh, refined carbohydrates and starches, and poor nutritional diversity, which is very important to having a really strong microbiome and having good gut health. Um, as I go in through uh, talking about some of these other proteins and nutritional diversity, I do want to say that some of this is uh, what I had spoken with Dr. Dr. Hyman. Um, for those of you who do or do not know, Dr. Mark Hyman is a pioneer and a leader in the functional medicine world. And I had the privilege and honestly the honor, I was very excited to <laughs> speak with him. I was a little bit starstruck at the time uh, to interview him for my article. And he was gracious enough to speak with me and give me some insight on the importance of nutrition in a function and what people could be eating and what we can change um, to optimize our microbiome and our gut health and ultimately our immune system. So with proteins, you want to gravitate to non-GMO vegetarian fed eggs, grass-fed meats, wild-caught fishes like salmon, sardines, black cod, there's a list goes on. Uh, those are the more like anti-inflammatory ones that I like to mention. Uh, vegetables and whole grain sources. So quinoa, amaranth, those are full of protein. Mushrooms, legumes, lentils, all are great if in case you're a vegan or vegetarian and don't consume animal products. Uh, carbohydrates, um, again, avoid the processed grains. And I mentioned meat here. So uh, just again, avoid processed meats, uh, avoid crackers, bread, pasta, um, avoid added sugars, refined sugars, artificial sweeteners. Um, I know that's something that says like zero sugar in it, but just look at the ingredients like aspartame and all those kinds of things can all lead to um, irritation of our microbiome and our immune health. So the big thing that I want to focus on was maintaining nutritional diversity to kind of reverse any weight gain that occurred and also help support our immune function. So nutritional diversity can really come from, again, the proteins that I mentioned before, but also from plant sources. So polyphenols, which are a plant source of micronutrients, like our vitamin C, D, zinc, omega-3, and well, selenium more so. Uh, phytonutrients are also important. So those are the chemicals that are produced by plants, and those are typically our antioxidants. So they prevent our free radical damage. And that can be beta-carotene, 
alpha carotene, carotenoids, resveratrol that we see in great, underneath grape skin, um, all of those things are chemicals that are produced that can help our immune function. So just kind of giving a brief state. So micronutrients and phytonutrient supplements, a lot of people have been grabbing supplements off the shelves. And I know, um, you know, supplements can be great, they, they, but they shouldn't be supplementing a, a diet that doesn't have full nutrition. So elderberry was something I listed here just because I thought it was very interesting in response to immune function. I, <laughs> I was in Costco the other day and I saw this elderberry container that was massive as Costco things are. And I was just like, I laughed to myself wondering, okay, well now there's this whole trend about gravitating to our elderflower. And I know that, so I wanted to see the research behind it. There has been some research that studied it with the flu and saw that there was some possible benefit with taking elderberry or elderflower extracts. Um, what it does when the um, scientists actually studied the actual uh, phytonutrients from it was that it does reduce the nitric oxide that causes the inflammation and then it also supports our innate immune system. So the dendritic cells getting very scientific here, but those cells that help present um, infection to our T cells, they get stronger. So it's a Always good things. Also, elderberry has been studied, and there's been an association that it increases um, support and immune function in response to upper respiratory infections, which I can see why during the pandemic uh, that people are gravitating towards it. However, there's no like definitive research on that that I was able to find that, that proves that it does prevent against upper respiratory infection, um, but does support our immune system like stated. Vitamin C, again, is a very popular one, zinc, magnesium, selenium. So these are just, I listed a bunch of things that these micronutrients are very uh, popular and why we use them. Um, but one of my uh, dear friends, Bridget Tegemeyer, she's a functional dietitian, and she's actually was also quoted in my article. But this quote, I absolutely love. And it's essentially saying, like I had said before, that we can't supplement our diet if it's not nourishing and it's not diverse and it's high in added sugars and refined carbohydrates, we need to make sure that we're trying to get our um, micronutrients and our vitamins and everything from food. That is the best type of um, nutritional supplementation that we can do is just changing our diet. So how to strengthen your immune system and its function through food. So looking at phytonutrients, what can we eat for that? So you can eat winter squashes are really important, kale, carrots, sweet potatoes, turnips. There's many, many vegetables. I couldn't list them all, but these are some of the ones that I pinpointed just because they're in season and it's something that you can kind of gravitate towards as we enter the fall and winter months. Uh, vitamin C, again, kale, citrus fruits, winter squash, turnips, pomegranates, kiwis. Vitamin A, liver, if it's something that interests you, turnips, eggs, papaya, um, not so much in the winter months, but you know, papaya's in there. And then uh, vitamin D, so mushrooms, sardines, um, but sunlight is very important. And vitamin D is very hard to get through just food. So that one is something that typically does require supplementation. So continuing on the list, um, you know, zinc we can get from cashews, asparagus, salmon, oysters, selenium, Brazil nuts, omega-3s from olive oil, salmon, sardines. So what I'm really showing here is that not, you can, so let's say you eat kale, you're getting phytonutrients, you're getting vitamin C, you're getting fiber. So the foods that we consume that are wholesome and um, the vegetable sources and some protein sources, if we have a diet that's diverse, we're getting so many different micronutrients. We're getting phytonutrients. So we're able to support our gut health, support our immune system, prevent free radical um, oxidation. So these are all things that I think are really beneficial and something to think about. Um, I'm personally really a big fan of turnips in the winter months. I think they're an amazing vegetable. They get really, they're really underrated. And you know, you can see here that you get phytonutrients, you get vitamin C, you get vitamin A. So it's just so diverse. Um, of the nutritional benefit that you get. And then this is something that I just want to throw in. I love Chinese medicine. I love the way that they kind of map the body, especially appreciating that we are cyclic beings. Um, as the seasons change, what we eat changes, what um, organ system we should focus on changes. And as we're in the autumn season, as we're in fall, um, I love that they focus on the lung and large intestine. This is something that I read uh, years before in a book that I just kind of picked up and was reading about Chinese medicine. And a lot of the foods that they recommended, um, ironically, support our microbiome. So if you look at colon um, to support our gut, uh, our colon, they recommend fermented foods. And that, again, supports our microbiome. Um, 
the lungs. So they ask for root vegetables, which again are in season, uh, sweet potatoes, turnips, carrots, uh, cooked vegetables, dark leafy greens like kale. These are all things that are just so diverse and have such strong nutritional content that I think it's something that we should always consider and appreciate for those who, you know, type of medical practice has been around for thousands of years. Um, and again, they actually pinpoint to avoid bread, sugar, potatoes, um, not sweet potatoes, but just uh, regular potatoes, cold, cold milk, noodles, cold drinks. So really start to continue engaging in warm foods, dark leaf, leafy greens, root vegetables to kind of help support our immune system and in Chinese medicine perspective, our lung and colon. Um, and that's kind of... Um, the full gist of my talk. Uh, here are some references and a big thank you to Dr. Frame who's been incredible. Uh, she's been my mentor and thank you so much for inviting me here today. It was so exciting. Uh, Jeanette Rodriguez, thank you so much for also um, being such a great supportive um, person for me this past few months and um, allowing me to speak here today. And of course, Dr. Hyman, Bridget and the ABC News team. Um, I know they're obviously not here, but Eric Strauss and Sony Salzman have been so supportive um, of my interest end of my writing and um, I'm planning on while well, I'm actively working on another article on nutrition about uh, cancer prevention and preventing progression of cancers so that's something to look out for in the next few weeks so thank you guys for having me here and speaking with me today for listening just have to say you did be very proud Netta uh, and I think those of you who have attended these regularly will, will notice a theme actually from some of my talks um, so you're getting a refresher uh, about the importance of diversity <laughs> in the gut microbiome. And I've brainwashed you all now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, there's a question about whether they can read your work, Netta. So we should include links to your articles so they can, can read them. And then I think you can okay. they follow you on ABC News. Um, I have a Twitter account, yes, and then that's where I post a lot of my articles when they get updated or on Instagram, so either one. I can provide that, I don't know, Jeanette, should I send it to you or how do I do that? Yes, you can send it to Dana and she'll send it out to everyone. In fact, anything you want okay. to distribute, um, people love getting handouts, right? We have a little share folder that we use. <laughs> Okay, great. Yeah, and we can, um, I can make this into a, a PDF or whatever have you, and so people can use it um, if they want the list of foods and their, um, like, the nutrients and the foods that are associated with it. I do see one question for you uh, from Monica. Thank you for addressing this important <laughs> pandemic-related topic. For someone who has hypothyroidism, can pandemic-related stress and anxiety cause thyroid levels to drop and lead to sudden weight gain? That is a very good question. Um, so I would say first and foremost, if you feel as though the symptoms of your hypothyroidism are getting worse, or you feel as though that the level, that you just feel as though your that the thyroid function has changed with weight gain, constipation, um, dry skin, I would first talk to whoever manages your thyroid condition. So whether it be an endocrinologist or your primary care physician and get your level checked to make sure that you're, dosage is accurate. In addition, it's really important to see, so if you take supplements like biotin, that is one that really does inhibit um, the thyroid hormone absorption. So that's something to think about, like what foods or what supplements are you taking with your thyroid medication, and then kind of readdress that. But of course, like stress, um, I think on its own can lead to weight gain because we just um, gravitate towards those types of foods that give us comfort. And in addition, um, stress has been linked to you know, cortisol levels, if they're high, can lead to increase in abdominal um, weight gain as well. So definitely talk to your endocrinologist or primary care doctor who manages that condition and then kind of go from there. Yeah, and I think um, Donna is saying, <clears throat> putting something really important. Donna, I think it's something that I rather we hold till next week or whenever I speak and I can take that and try to address it. I think we're basically gonna have to go back to the earlier times and discuss this the way we discussed this back in spring. I think the diet was well covered today. I think we're gonna have to discuss other, other suggestions as well and additional also just to kind of <clears throat> re-energize us to stay cautious uh, to 
do the protective personal protective steps as well as distancing um, I think those are only gonna right now further increase in importance especially since it's gonna get cooler and we're gonna spend more time indoors so um, unfortunately you're right and we will continue addressing that so I think with that unless there's a last specific question uh, let me just make sure scroll it down there is one question from Mary which I think is very insightful. I think some of my increased belly fat is related to working night in the ER, stress, eating, and sleeping at odd times. Is this accurate? Um, I'm just gonna say a big yes to that, but you guys can chime in with some thoughts on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nighttime, the circadian rhythm disruption are notoriously can affect the entire system, definitely shift cortisol production. You know, cortisol surge occurs at night when we sleep. If that gets all shifted, you start getting a, a strange cortisol spikes at the wrong times of the day, making you more hungry, consuming more calories. It's just, you know, it's unfortunately this question also gets to a point of somebody does have to work at night. I mean, and so how do you do this well? It's a general philosophical question for the entire country. I and mean, how do you carefully allow um, to separate the risk between different healthcare providers. And Neda knows this first line. I mean, she's in residence. So this is talking about stress. At least you're in third year now. So the first year is just, you know, you feel like your life has been taken under you and all you do is working long hours. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I think with that, um, let's see if anybody have questions now. Try to hold them off till the end if we have a little time left, and we'll give floor to Luann to lead us into the practice. All right. Thanks, everyone. Dr. Netta, that was great. I always learn so much coming to these sessions. So today I thought we would um, pursue a different topic. Uh, we, Angela was here, Angela Gabriel was here a few weeks ago and she gave us her five element in Chinese medicine, which made me think it would be fun to examine another five element system that's closer to home called the medicine wheel, a holistic system used by North, Central and South American tribal nations as a guide to developing and achieving wisdom in cooperation with the land we live on and the animals and plants that we live with. Five element systems have been used throughout our world before modern medicine and continue now as we revive and reconnect with our ancient healing systems. The classical five elements in the cultures of ancient Greece, Persia, Babylonia, Japan, Tibet, China, India, all have similar elemental lists, air or wind, water, earth, fire, and a fifth element known sometimes as void or space or center or heart. Uh, these systems relate to our physical bodies and beyond, to the cosmic and sacred, usually represented by that ever-changing fifth element, void, space, ether center. So today we're going to explore the medicine wheel in a ceremony of blessing. First peoples related to the five elements is synonymous with nature. They understood us to be nature dependent. They understood the power of nature to transform because we are made of the same elements. Nature is kind of a mother tincture to which we return to refill our emptiness. And as we care for her, we care for ourselves. What happens to Mother Earth happens to our bodies, and what happens to our bodies happens to Mother Earth. There is no one medicine wheel because each tribe responded to their unique physical environment. A tribe in the rainforest, for instance, would not have the same animals or plant symbols as a tribe in the frozen north or in a dry, hot climate. So you will find as many medicine wheel descriptions as there are tribes, but they all have a similar, um, a similarity. They function on the principle of a circle of life. And by moving from lodge to lodge, 
or directional positions along the medicine wheel, we journey to the process of life for our health, for our growth, for our wisdom and our transformation. So today I wanna to take you on two journeys around the medicine wheel. The first is a guided meditative exploration through the five elements and the nine directions. And the second will be a meditative con contemplation of each of the five elements and how it relates to you and your life. And then third, I'll close with um, a poem called, I Breathe With You. So my, and so to begin, you're going to need a piece of paper and a pen. So if you can do that while I'm setting us up. And let me show you, you're going to draw something that's gonna look not quite as complex as this, but just a big circle. And at the top of the circle, you wanna write N for North. At the bottom of the circle, you wanna write S for South. Horizontal line through the circle and on the right, write the letter E for East. And on the left, write the letter W for West. If you look behind me, I have a tribal nations map of North America and Central America. And every dot on this map was an individual Native American tribe. So close your eyes, breathe into your legs and feet. Allow the head to lift gently toward the sky, placing your hands on your heart. Imagine yourself in the center of your circle. This is the starting point. This is the center because we come here to renew, restore, and rebalance. And there is space here to do this. So first we're just going to breathe in and notice what space feels like. We're going to build a fire here called the children's fire. This fire is to support us, to renew us. It's the life force. It's our place to recharge. It's our internal spark, your true voice, the light, the creator's gift of connection. So take this image of the fire and build a fire of love in your heart. And now as a group, let us move to the east. You can walk in your mind. You can dance if you feel like it. Our hands move to the left belly, one hand on the area that's stomach and spleen, and one hand on the back near the left kidney. And breathe. This is called the men's lodge, and it represents the past. It's the place of springtime. It's the sunrise and new beginnings the element air, and all winged things. It's called the men's lodge because it's the lodge of mental energy of questioning, inquiry, and analyzing, having contrary thoughts, going back and forth about a problem, considering all the options. It's our masculine type of energy. What thoughts have you been having? What conflicts are you dealing with? Breathing in, we move to the southeast and our hands move to the left hip. And we breathe. This is called the Peace Chief's Lodge. Here we settle the mind's turmoil and we make peace. We move towards acceptance. 
have you been able to make peace? The energy here is more feminine. Breathing in, we move to the south and our hands move to the tops of our thighs and we breathe. This is the lodge of the war chiefs. It represents the present. It represents summer and the high noon heat of the day in the summer. And it's the fire element, the physical body and our fight to survive. We never start a war, but we will rise to defend ourselves. Thus, the immune system is represented here. This is a place of trust, your body willing to trust and activate the immune system to defend itself. We fight back with our innocence and trust, not with revenge. The animal totem here is Coyote. He's called the trickster. He represents the ability to trust and see through illusion. He reflects back to us our need to keep things simple and open to possibilities. Coyote often shows up when we most need to laugh at ourselves for being too serious. Breathing in. Our hands move to the right hip and we move to the southwest. This is the lodge of mediums, singers, storytellers, and healers. This is a time of interpreting. What have I learned from the past and the present to guide me in the future? What is my story that I am willing to share to provide a legacy for the future. Next, we move our hands to the west, the right belly, one hand on liver, one hand on the right kidney, and we breathe. This is the women's lodge or the Council of Silence. It represents sunset, autumn, the future. It's the water element in our emotions. Bear is the animal totem. We go within for introspection. Bear represents you are free to wander and find your path. Here we sit in silence with the grandmothers until you have gained insight. You bring your questions, you bring your problems, your troubles, and sit in silence in the West and wait. This is also the portal where souls cross over. As we breathe in again, we move our hands now to the northwest, the right shoulder and arm, the right lung. And we're cradling our arms as if we were holding our infant close. This is the council lodge, anticipating the dream. You say yes to what you've learned in silence at the women's lodge. This is the position of and power of affirmation. Is there something you are wanting to do but putting off? Do you need to get counsel and are you avoiding it? To sit in this counsel is to acknowledge that a solution can be found, a choice made, to promise that some action will be taken to bring about a resolution or to delegate others to do what needs to be done to make it so. Now we move our hands to the north and we breathe. Head, pituitary pineal and throat, thyroid. 
This is the lodge of hunters and gatherers, or called the Wisdom Lodge. We are now in the dream. It is winter. The element is earth. Buffalo is the animal tone of. Buffalo represents the strength to carry heavy burdens. It represents selflessness, abundance, and liberation. We have experienced the past, the present, anticipated the future, and we are now ready for transformation. It is through the work we choose, learning from the choices we make, that wisdom comes. And wisdom is the essential nature of the soul or spirit. The work or wisdom lodge is also called the spirit lodge. And we were, when we are in this lodge, we are in cooperation with creator. We are connected to our ancestors. Our last direction is the northeast and we move our hands to the left arm and shoulder, left lung, and we breathe. This is the dog soldiers lodge. The dog soldiers take a vow to protect the children and the children's children until the sun no longer sets and the moon no longer rises. This is the final position in the medicine wheel, and the dog soldiers have the final veto power if the decisions made are not good for children's children for seven generations. This includes the issues of ecology in earth and plant and animal realms, and this lodge is about self and soul retrieval and protecting your inner child. If you protect others, you have dog soldier energy. This is the lodge of protection going forward. But there's another part to this one, which is, are you allowing yourself to be playful? Are you willing to play? And then we always close the circle by returning to the heart, to the children's fire and we express gratefulness for what we have learned. Now, how do I bring my problem or issue to the medicine wheel? And here's, the, we're going to do our second journey around the wheel. And this time we're gonna ask, you're going to each ask your own personal questions, and I'm going to guide you in this the first time. So in the heart, in this circle, in this space and place of reconnection, restoration, in the center, the question is, what can I know about space or void or center in me? What can I know about space or void or center in you? Shifting our gaze to the east, element air, new beginnings, dawn. What can I know about air in me? What can I know about air element in you? Moving to the south, to the fire, to the immune system, to our self-care and the greatest compassion for ourselves. What can I know about the element fire in me?
What can I know about the element fire in you? Shifting our gaze to the west, water, mutable emotions, gateway for souls leaving where the veil is thinnest at sunset. What can I know about water element in me? What can I know about water element in you? And then turning our gaze north, earth, transformational spirit, the moon, the stars, the night. What can I know about earth element in me? What can I know about earth element in you? Take a moment to write down anything you want to remember about this journey for yourself. As I shift into our closing poem, I breathe with and for you. Who among us can breathe and who cannot? I breathe with and for you. I breathe with you and all your friends and families connected ones and with the trees outside my window and with the waters big and small and with the wind and the smoke and the fires and the ash and the rain and the fog. And I breathe with all the spiders who wanna be inside and the roly poly bugs inching across the floor and with the rocks big and small, and with the sea lions barking at the bottom of the hill, with the screaming birds, the seagulls, the crows, the eagles. I breathe with the mighty hummingbird and her electric sound. I breathe with the dahlias and the crocosmias, with the geraniums and the mint, the milkweed and the marigolds. I breathe with the wood of this house strong and sturdy and with the windows and their vision. I breathe with the mold hidden or not. And I breathe with the idea of balance. I breathe with knowing I am not the center of the universe. I breathe with my part in the world, with the joy in me and with the joy in you. I breathe with our separation and I breathe with our connection. I breathe with our suffering and our end to the cause of suffering. I breathe with our letting go, our opening up, our open hearts, our minds free and clear. I breathe with my pain and I breathe with your pain. I breathe with being free of pain I breathe with the life force and to be present, to be soft and yielding, to stand firmly in my groundedness. And I breathe with the skies. I breathe with all the colors we see, red, orange, yellow, green, purple, black, brown, white. I breathe with the earth's core fiery and expanding, and with the earth's crust brittle and crumbling, or fertile and verdant. I breathe into all the elements, fire, air, metal, space, wood, earth. I breathe with being in relationship, and I breathe with what's my portion. What do I need going forward? 
I breathe with the body and with the voice. And I breathe with say my name and say all the names. I breathe with the liver, the toxin filter. I breathe with the spleen and lymph, first line of defense. I breathe with the blood, oxygen distributor. I breathe with our bones, structure, shape, and scaffolding. I breathe with the inner marrow, stem cell producer. And I breathe with the lungs, the wings of our hearts. I breathe with the sounds around and in me. And I breathe with the smells swirling in and out. I breathe with my hands and their touch to this body. I breathe with the sensations on my skin, the borders of my body, beyond the borders, with the heavenly host, with the moonlight, with the sun's radiance. And I breathe with the stars, the night, the day. I breathe into this life right now and into the lives before this one and the lives after. With our hands cupped to cradle our nation with all protection Buddha mudra. I breathe with riding out the storm with calm. I breathe with the power of love. I breathe with giving love. And I breathe with receiving love. And I breathe with there is no difference in giving and receiving love. I breathe with there is no other when we breathe with our connection. I breathe with all the forces of nature giving life to this planet. May we breathe respect. May we breathe balance through listening. I breathe with hearing you and you hearing me. I breathe with the name of God in the silence of my breath's exhalation. And I breathe with loving you and me, for we are one. In all dedication to Barbara Boston, nurse practitioner, friend, and mentor, who led me into this path. May we be peace. For those who don't know, Barbara was one of the co-founders of the clinic with Luann and Dr. Pim. Uh, and she um, passed away a while back from cancer. Thank you, Luann. Thank you. I think the silence signifies that people are in such a deep space, there's nothing to say. Yes, so you might want to just reground through your feet, feel your feet on the ground, allow your head again to lift upward, stretch a little bit. Pat your face a little, bring yourself back. I hate to to spoil this beautiful <laughs> mood, but um, Misha, are there any more questions that you need to answer? I was scrolling through. I didn't see any new questions. I think I didn't um, see any either. Yeah, I think we addressed everything. So. And Meta, we would love to have you back. Yes. That would be maybe uh, maybe in a month, a couple of months. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you guys so much for having me. It was so, so much fun. 
And thank you, Luann. That was unbelievable. <laughs> I'm like in a different headspace right now. Right. Yeah, I just remind I'll everyone as the always that videos are available. In. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll put the meditation, both the breathing meditation and the medicine wheel meditation. I'll give that to Janet. She'll put it in the folder. Yeah, that's great. And just remind everyone that the videos are available on uh, YouTube, so you can actually go back and do this again if you'd like to. Yeah. And anytime uh, one of our um, guests have given us handouts we put them in that folder and just go to the different dates um, and uh, the information will be there or do you guys think I should organize them by the name of the guest that might How actually do you think be helpful I should do in the chat before we close out also, there's a while they're doing that, there's a question uh, about how to get into the folder, and I assume you will be sending the link out in an email. Well, I just dropped the link in the chat. So if they go back through the chat, and I'll do it again. But we always include that link in the follow up email that I'll send out later today. I'm seeing both guest and date. So I wonder if maybe if you do it by date, but you can put who presented in the name of that folder. So then people would say, oh, I wanted to look at Luann's and this was the second one she did. So I'm gonna go down to, just a thought. <laughs> yeah, I can do it that way too. <laughs> We're American Not right away, folks, but I'll, I'll get to it. <laughs> So I think that is is it. We should end today on I think a very peaceful note. And we'll see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Uh can you giant hold off for a second? I'm answering a prep person. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna get the email. That must have been a deep question. So um, while we're waiting for Misha to uh, get that information he needs to answer the question, I am going to um, let you all know that we have a podcast called the GW Integrative Medicine Podcast, and you can find it on wherever you listen to your podcasts for the most part, and um, just look up GW Integrative Medicine and it'll pop up. And um, we discuss everything on there from the health benefits of medical cannabis to integrative women's health to uh, a lot of nutrition um, topics uh, featuring some of the people who have uh, come on uh, into this gathering to share their knowledge with us. Okay, it looks like Misha has an answer. What? Yeah, I'm, we're good. All right, thanks. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Thank it you. Was great. Thank you for being here thank for us. Thank you for us. coming. Luann, Nieta, Bye. thank you again. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Janet. Bye, Luann. Bye, Salami. Luann, that was very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank You're you. welcome. See you. See you, Sam. Bye. Bye. Yeah. All right, I'm going to end it in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, leave. <laughs>